we're just going to take a few minutes with you just to engage what we've been talking. We've been in a series on the Elijah generation, and I really feel that what we're going through right now, me personally, this word is relevant, but I want you to hear from this group that's behind us. I want you to hear their heart. I want you to hear what God is saying to them. And I also want to say that if you are on Facebook or the RCF network and you have a question, a comment, either directed to myself or one of the persons on this panel, that, that you can uh, reach out to them as well, amen, and that they will um, engage you and be glad to respond so that the good Lord would move. So let me read this passage. I'm in 1 Kings chapter 17, and we're just dealing with the first seven verses. Um, this is part two of the series. I believe the Bible study that we'll be going through is available on the RCF network for download. So feel free if you want to follow along with us, you can grab that and be a part of what God's doing. So it opens up by saying, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe, I'm in the ESV, in Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall neither be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, Depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan, and you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and lived by the brook Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And after a while, my translation says, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Elder John, I know you're hiding, but I think you're supposed to be on this with us. So you figure that out. Amen. Come on up. Let's make this happen. So listen, here's what we've been doing. We have been talking about the Elijah generation. And last week we laid the foundation of some crazy stuff that was going on when Ahab became king over the nation of Israel. He did some crazy things in that he had these three unthinkable sins. He married Jezebel, um, the daughter of Ethbaal. He um, was duly aligned in his theocracy, meaning that he wanted to worship God and he wanted to worship Baal at the same time. Not only that, but he was also duly aligned in his worship, right? So he had this crazy lifestyle. And matter of fact, the Bible says in chapter 16 that Elijah did more evil to anger God than any other king before him. So here's what God does. He raises up an Elijah, and I believe Elijah was set aside just for this season. So God raises up Elijah to go now to Ahab and to say to him that God is going to withhold the rain and prevent it from raining until God says so. Now here's what's interesting about this text, and then we're going to engage this group that's behind us, is that the whole challenge that was going on at the time of the text was that Ahab and Jezebel and the Phoenicians, that's the Ugaritic or the Canaanite people, had this framework that Baal was on par with God. And so where the Israelites worship God and they serve God, these Phoenicians had this philosophy that you sh we shouldn't only worship God. Listen to the words I'm going to use. We ought to give people options. And they wanted to make Baal on the same plane that God hid. But if anybody out there ever read Exodus chapter 20, here's what it says, right? You shall have what? No other God before me. So whenever we set anything up in the place of God, I want you to get this. God is going to intervene. God's going to intervene. So we've been studying this, and we've been going through this a little bit. And so I want to engage this group, and we've got a list of questions, and they're probably out there on, on, on the network, so make sure you can download this thing. And so three things that we're going to cover tonight. Number one is that when God sends you to the Ahabs of this world, he sends you with a proclamation. So you've got to go say what says the Lord, right? Not only does he send you with a proclamation, but in the sending, there is also protection. Well, God will protect you so that the enemy can't do what he wants done. But in the protection, there is also provision. So we want to talk through those three things, and we want to see how that connects into where the country or our nation, let me go here globally, where this world finds itself today. So, group, let me, let me talk to you all for a little while, and then you get a chance to increase. So here's, here's what the Bible says in 1 Kings. I mean, here's what the lesson says as we look about that God uses Elijah's generation to proclaim his word to the world. 
1 Kings 17, some comments, right? Elijah had been and was being prepared by God to demonstrate to Israel that Yahweh, not Baal, is the only true God. Even Elijah's name, which means Yahweh is my God, conveyed that fact. The tension that existed at the time of the text is the fact that Jezebel, working through her husband Ahab, was implementing policies and actions with intention to promote Baal as the national deity of Israel in place of Yahweh. So Elijah was armed with God's promise. He walked eastward to Samaria into the palace, confronted Ahab with the word of the Lord. So listen to the question. So here it is. So when you hear that, I want to ask you all this, and let's talk and talk to our people that's watching online. In what ways is today's culture similar to the days of Elijah? Sounds like a song, doesn't it? <laughs> Where there seems to be a competition with Baalism, that's the worship of Baal, and the worship of Yahweh. So let's talk about that, right? When you look at culture, when you look at what's going on in the world, when you see what's happening out there, how does that look like what it looked like for Ahab, right? So let's talk. Let me see. Who wants to go first? Let's so fast go for it. Yeah, you ready to jump in there. Do it, girl. Well, when I think about all of the people that are swayed by universal um, wow. religion yeah. and, and a new age religion. Oh, you're going to offend some people now. Um, you know, it's always the, the push that, that that way of life yeah. is and that way of worship that yeah. way of spiritual being is better than than serving god wow. and they are convinced that even though they are constantly worshiping a, a big statue it's yeah. clear yeah. that it's a statue yeah. um that, that that is the the way to go yeah wow so we see that today yes when we yes. see it's so very it, it, common. It, okay good good anybody else okay i'm, I'm right Arnold? there i'm right there with um Pastor Topaz, because yeah. if you look at it, it's even creeping in the church. Yeah, wow. That the things that we're doing to attract the world sometimes is more worldly than it's yeah. God. <laughs> so we want to we wanna do Baal, yeah. and we want to do God at the same time, yeah. but we should have no other God but God. Yeah, so it sounds like what you're saying is the same thing that, that Jezebel was, and Ahab was trying to raise and saying, hey, we know Israelites, y'all worship God. But we worship this Baal dude, and we don't see the difference. And it seems like you're saying, just like how um, 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 Ahab was duly aligned in his worship, the church today is wanting to be duly aligned. Yes. That's not healthy. Cassandra, what would you say about that? That ain't healthy. I would agree with him um, yeah. in, the, in the fact that people come to church, and they worship on Sundays, and they do what they do on Sunday, and then they go back out to their jobs, yeah. and they live... You know, like the world lives, there's no separation. There's no um, being able to tell them that they're different yeah. from the people in the world. Wow, so interesting. two lives, you know, straddling the fence. Oh, my goodness. Y'all going to get me in trouble. Okay. Donnie, what would you add to that? Yeah. the place of, of you coming forward and, and being in the midst of God. Yeah. So if I take a schedule, I'm working on the weekend, well, as a Christian, my speaking up and saying, hey, Sundays don't work for me. Yeah. Or it's wow. something that I think we need to go forward and make that separation. Okay. So we got to be able to delineate between that. Okay. Okay. John, let me ask you a question. Okay. You're back to Elder John. So listen to this. In, in what ways, in what ways, and you might have to, to step out of darkness into light and give up the Baalism back there. And, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get too close. Yeah. Don't get too close. Stay socially distanced. But listen to this. How could God use you? So I'm going to get personal with you all, okay? And you're talking to the audience. And how could God use you, as he did Elijah, to lovingly confront leaders, okay? Listen to what Pastor Topaz said. Listen to what everybody said, what um, Pastor Piercy said, what we just got through saying about we wanting to have our cake and eat it too. So how could he use you to lovingly confront leaders who may have influence, okay, um, to caution them of the danger of being duly aligned in this theocracy. <laughs> you, know, you know, Pastor, you said um, 
in your first service, your first sermon, yeah. before the second ser uh, sermon of the series, you used duly aligned a lot in theocracy. Yeah. And that was really, really, I think the most important part of this was the whole double-mindedness yeah. that's going on in the, in the church as well as in the world. But in the church, double-mindedness yeah. is probably the poison that, that's bringing down the church. Yeah. And so outside, if I go to work, I go to anywhere and I'm seen in a position or a place where I'm at work and I'm talking about things that are not aligned with who I am, then my double-mindedness is starting to show. Yeah. So I think the answer would be a single-mindedness. Am mm. I okay in the monitors? My, my single-mindedness in, in the presence of my family, my friends, my work, yeah. my workers, uh, anybody I come around or I am around, that would be the advice or the thing I would, I think would be the most important to me is to be um, singly aligned. Yeah, Alignment yeah, is, yeah. I mean, all the way up from my senior leadership yeah. all the way to the throne of God. Yeah. You have to be aligned with the, the mission and the will of God. So let me push you off. I get we need to be aligned because the universalist is aligned singly. You get what I'm saying? The Buddhist is aligned signally. How do you? As a person that say you love God, go to a person that you know that's not there. You know how rough it had to have been for Elijah to be bold enough <laughs> to go to Ahab and to say to him, God is saying. So how do you do that? How do you do that? We got to know who we are standing for. Yeah. And, and who is with us. And that's God. Yeah. And so when you're confident in your God yeah. and that whatever you're doing can, can make an mm. impact then you got to be bold enough to say, I'm going to say what God would have me to say yeah. um, to whoever he, he have me to say to, and, and God will protect me. God will, will, will keep me, but I'm, i got to do. i got to keep my yeah. integrity in yeah. Christ. Yeah. i got to do what i got to do yeah. and say what God would have me to say. So I'm here in boldness. Any more world people up here, go for it. Okay? I think it's um, equally important for you because sometimes you can say things to people, but I think watching your life is more important. Because uh, uh, if you're walking out what you believe, yeah. that makes a bigger statement than you going and telling someone what yeah. they should do. Yeah. So it sounds to me, sounds to me that, that, that Ahab couldn't have showed, I mean, Elijah couldn't show up at Baal worship and then hang out there with Baal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ahab, and he, he had to say, I ain't going over That's there. Right. Oh, my goodness. Pastor Page is going to say something. I was going to say that also we have to be prepared when, when we say that we are going to be bold, when we're going to step out there, when we're willing to take a risk, that we have to be prepared sometimes for rejection. Yeah. We have to be prepared mm. to stand alone. Mm. We have to be prepared to be humiliated in the yeah. process. All of those things that may happen as a result of our willingness to be steadfast yeah. and to be on fire for Christ. It happened to Jesus, it happened to the disciples, yeah. and it happens now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow. Johnny and, and also, you know, God wants us it. to be holy, not always happy. Yeah. That's the problem with the world. <laughs> and I mean, really, it's, he's after your holiness, not yeah. your happiness. Right. And that's the, the path we make our decisions on sometimes yeah. is, you know, the girlfriends will tell the girl, hey, yeah. be happy, move on, do your thing. Right, right. And it's just the worst advice in the world. The next thing is, um, we have a lot of leaders now in high places, yeah. even where I work at. I, I don't want to say where that is. Well. But they have, they have same-sex marriages, and, and it's, it's all over the office. It's all over the workplace. Wow. It's all over the, the structure that I work yeah. in. And, yeah. and, you know, and people look at me, and they're waiting for the answer. What are you mm. going to say? Pastor mm, John, or, yeah. and, and, it, and I say, you know, sometimes the most important thing to say isn't no. what's obvious, but, you know, don't mistake God's patience for yeah. his permission. Yeah. And that is probably the one thing Some that haunts lines. most is you're in a, a position of grace, yeah. but when you meet the maker, he'll reckon with you. Yeah. So we mistake his patience for his permission to do a lot of things that are duly aligned, yeah. like one is... The, the acting out of, you know, wow. same-sex marriage. And so that, wow. to me, is somewhat, it doesn't make me anything. It just says, yeah. you need to ponder that. I'm going back to work. Yeah. Now, now let me soften this a little bit. Let me soften, soften this a little bit. By that, I mean, we get the sin of the same-sex marriage, and we get the sin of all, but I think it's important that those people that are in that thing still know that God loves them. Exactly. You kind of understand? Yes. That's very important, right? And, and, and the, reason, the reason God raises up the Elijah to go to them is because he loves them. Yes. So we, gotta, we have to say that. We don't want people to feel that God doesn't. You kind of get what I'm saying? We want to say it. Pastor Kay, you want to add anything to this? You say, yeah, and then you know, I got a tough... I've just, just from listening to uh, 
what the word of the Lord is going around the world. Prayer, uh, the season of prayer that God has many churches and many leaders in, um, is equivalent to the preparation that uh, Elijah was going through. Wow. God was preparing him to go and face Ahab, to go and uh, dethrone him, yeah. and, and to uh, let his voice be heard in the throughout the nations. I believe God's saying the exact same thing. I think that this scripture mirrors exactly where we are today. Because okay, God so is don't go there yet. Don't go. That's, let me ask the question, then you go there. <laughs> so I want everybody to answer, right? So here's the thing. Do you believe then, because I'm seeing you going there, that there's a correlation between, let me phrase this this way, the sets of circumstances that was happening in Ahab's day and the sets of circumstances that's happening in the world that God could be, he could be. I don't want nobody to say, Pastor Felix is speaking prophetically or saying, ah, they say he could be. We know God, right? That God could be saying, if y'all want to do this, I'm going to do that. Do you think there's a correlation between what we're seeing with Elijah and Ahab and this whole coronavirus pandemic that could potentially be going on? Let's talk about that to our people. I'm going to speak prophetically, yes. Yeah. Okay. I believe God is, is trying to awaken his church. Mm. I believe yeah. that the church has has the Ahab mindset, Ahabism, wow. where we're sleeping with Jezebel. Oh, we're having Lord. intercourse with Jezebel. Oh, no. We're going oh, no. into intimate places with Jezebel, yes. but then we come to church and try to That's act good. like we're That's not. It. I'm fanning, I'm fanning. God, <laughs> God is not pleased with that, so it doesn't have to, you know, necessarily, I mean, you just think, just in your mind, think of what you do that is unpleasing yeah. to God. Think of the things that you're hung up on, thinking Think of the things that, the, the little things or big things or whatever they are that you're doing that you know are not pleasing to God. Yeah, but yet yeah. you're still entertaining them because you're walking on God's grace. And God's wow. like, I'm not playing with y'all. Yeah, wow. Now I'm going to show you who I am. Wow. And I believe this, this coronavirus is God just giving us a glimpse of wow. his power. When you take down Ooh. America's economy, America's entertainment, on America, Come everything, on down. Thing, wow. then you know God is wow. saying something. Because right. no money can fix this. No man can fix this. Only yeah. God can fix this. All right, y'all talk. I want, I want to give me what you feel. I mean, let's talk. Do you feel that this was happening? I do believe that yeah. God is trying to get our attention. Okay. I need you to pay attention. I'm in control of yeah. this. You're not in control of anything. Yeah. And that, you know, turn from your ways yeah. and come back to me. Yeah. I yeah. believe God is truly. We need to become a praying people. We yeah. need to turn back to God wow. and stop all this madness. Okay, I love it. Okay, tell Pastor anything you well, want to add. Let's go, yeah. I think Pastor Kay said it best. Yeah, yeah. The church is sleeping with Jezebel. Lord and Jesus. has been sleeping with Jezebel for a long time. And that's that that's that affair with Baal. Yeah. That Ooh. is yeah. that affair with yeah. Baal that the church is having in this day, in this time, when we have people who claim Christ, the, yeah. the resurrected Savior yeah. as their own, but then they can stand with evil, they yeah. can stand with wickedness, yeah. they can stand with things that are truly, yeah. truly not in alignment with the word. And it's wow. obvious. It's not even something that requires research. It's yeah. obvious. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Well, I believe that um, God is allowing this. And I think uh, in agreement with um, what has already been said, but I also believe that because God loves loves everyone so much that he's giving people that don't know him the opportunity oh, wow. to repent, oh, to oh, turn nice. from their ways, their yeah. wicked ways, yeah. stop sin and, and, and look to him. Yeah. And, yeah. And, it's, and, and it's working yeah. because yeah. people that don't know the Lord are, are, are praying, oh God, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. I just believe that that's an opportunity for those yeah. that don't know the Lord yeah. to get to know to him. him. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, go for This you. is also an opportunity for um, the church, yeah, um, uh, the global church, for us to live and to speak out and to do what God called us to do. This yeah. is our opportunity yeah. to reach our communities. This is our opportunity yeah. to reach our world. Yes. This is our opportunity to model Christ that people can see even in desperate times, even in challenging times, yeah. we still can mirror Christ to the world. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Elder J. You know, Pastor, I'm impressed. I, I, I mentioned to you in, a, I think, a text or an email that, you know, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, yeah. was really on this thing in our country, and, and we did a good job getting getting traction for a country like ours, who, when you take away their, their leisure and their yeah. economy, they're not going to do it so fast. Other yeah. countries will um, submit faster. Yeah. We yeah. don't. Yeah. We're a bunch of spoiled brats. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. Um, opportunity and preparation. The churches that were prepared for this 
mm. uh, by, by just staying relevant, yeah. st staying uh, technologically advanced, by streaming, by recording, by doing electronic yeah. service, they, they are they're thriving, if, yeah. I, if I can yeah. say it that way. God's not surprised right. at this whole thing. He's also showing the fragile, uh, the way life is fragile, the economy is fragile. Yeah. It's like a flower, and, and the stock market shows you that anything happens and it pulls itself in like a yeah. Venus flytrap. It just shuts down. Yeah. Everything is, is, is dependent on that. And he says, if I lift my grace for five seconds on that earth, yeah. if I move my hands for just a minute, you got every breath. And he's just right now waving this thing over the earth. Wow. And I believe, like you said, it, it's very relevant. And right now, um, yeah. uh, it, it is, um, I think it, it has a correlation based on uh, his call, but also this country and, yeah. and other people who are called um, are, it's very relevant right now yeah. to what's going on. There's a correlation between the children of Israel yeah. and what's going on right now yeah. and the church. The church, yeah. But, but it's also just identifying God as being in total control. And the wow. lift, I believe, personally, it will be, like your sister, people that have their hands in this thing will be of God to move it out. Yeah. And that's my hope. So Deuteronomy and Leviticus talks about, you all know this, right, that, that God's people, that he says... When they don't act right, let me paraphrase, that there's going to be some intervention by him. He's going to withhold certain things, right? So you know this part in Second Chronicles 7, verse 13, that God says um, that when I withhold the rain, when I withhold the dew, when I withhold all this stuff, and if we understand anything about Baal worship, Baal thought that the people who worshiped Baal felt that he was the God of fertility. He was the God of the rain. He was the God of the dew. He was, and so God said, when I do all that, right? And, and here's what the church needs to do. Verse 14 said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, seek my face and pray, and, and watch this, do what? Turn, then what will happen? I will hear from heaven. I will do what? Forgive their sins and heal their land. I, I am seeing that, that in this moment, We've got more people praying. Yes. Yeah. You get it? <laughs> You've got more churches praying. You've got more ministries praying than I've ever prayed before. Could God be doing something? But here's the challenge number one, right? The first point was this. We've got to be willing to go to Ahab. And we've got to be willing to say, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Now here's the second thing we're going to talk about real quick. Um, is that after we go to Ahab and say to him, don't feel comfortable saying that I said what God called me to do, don't make the mistake into thinking that I won't come after you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what ticked Jezebel off the most, was the fact that here comes this little Elijah going to come say, thus said the Lord. And what that did was it now opened the door for, for Ahab and Eli I mean Jezebel to go chase him, right? The millennial. Yeah, they, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. They're coming now and they're going after you, right? So, so the, the, second, the, second, the second point was this, is that there's protection now. There's protection, right? And, 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 and I'm hoping we can make it through this because this is kind of exciting to me. I love the dialogue, right? There's protection. There's protection. So, so, so lock into this. So here's why I said Sunday. It's almost as if God said to Elijah, socially distance yourself. <laughs> from from Ahab, right? And 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 go into quarantine, yeah. right? And then he puts him by this brook so that God could protect him from these two people. So I, I think there's a sense where even the people of God, that God wants to protect us from this craziness, God wants to protect us. So I, I kind of really align with culture when it talks about socially distance yourself, right? Socially, um, going to quarantine, do the things that's necessary. Pastor Derek was telling us Sunday about washing your hands. All those things are very, very important, right? So here's what I want to ask you all. If you were to add to that and speak globally, right? Speak globally, not only to Christians, but to unsaved and all that stuff like what are some of the ways that you think God could protect the world in the midst of this crazy stuff? And how can we be obedient? I'm being broad here, right? Then I'm going to come right back to the church. But speak to your audience. What would you say to people out there in the world that's watching? People on Facebook, people on the network, people. Just what, what would you say to them are ways that God will protect his people? Y'all talk. Well, yeah. 
First, I want to say that the word says that he is no respecter of persons. Okay, good. And when he is no respecter of persons, then he will reign on the just and the unjust. Yeah. And the fact that he hasn't lowered the boom altogether, because he could, he, at any moment, right. the virus could have just taken everybody out. Right. But all the people that are spared, the saved and, and the unsaved, who have yeah. been spared, who have recovered from the coronavirus, yeah. I think is one of those ways. So be encouraged. Mm. We just want to say to you, be encouraged mm. right now, because as has already been said, this is a moment of pause. Yeah. This is a moment for every wow. one of us to get wow. ourselves together, to come wow. in and to humble ourselves. Yeah. He is not, he has not turned his face from you. Yeah. He has not given up on yeah. you. Yeah. He is still waiting. So no matter what you've done, yeah. no matter what it wow. is, you can be rescued in this. Yeah. It's not too late. So yeah. that's what I want to say. I'm hearing you say, boy, if you've been through and God brought you out, you better give your heart to him. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay right. Go pass line. Get, yeah. get connected. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, there are faith-based organizations and different yeah. people encouraging people. We know or mental health is. Yeah. We know um, stress and, and what it can do. Yeah. I, I believe that, you know, reaching out to people, you know, that are strong and yeah. is able to, to pray for yeah. you, that is able, you know, to just encourage you, yeah. will help you to get through this. Yeah. Don't, just, don't just stay by yourself. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you're really struggling, yeah. seek help. Yeah. Um, Get into that community. Yeah. You know, there are different churches. We yeah. are available, yeah, yeah. you know, to pray for you, to, yeah. to, to help you go through this. You don't have to do it alone. Yeah. So let me say this. I made this statement Sunday, right? That divine protection does not mean exemption. Exactly. Right? Right, right, right? I want to take right, a minute right. on that. Because here's what you got to understand. And, and I think sometimes as the church, we fool ourselves into thinking, I know God, I ain't got to deal with nothing, right? I know some God-fearing men and women of God that ended up with this thing, right? And, and let me go here with you and, and, and lock into this. If, if, if when, when Elijah predicted the drought and said it's not going to um, rain for X number of years, understand with me that it wasn't like Elijah was standing in a certain place and it was raining only on him and it wasn't raining nowhere else, right? So you got to figure if Ahab wasn't experiencing rain, Elijah wasn't experiencing rain, right? If, if, if Ahab had a shortage of food, Elijah had a shortage of food. You kind of get what I'm saying? If, if Ahab had a shortage of toilet paper, may I go there, right? <laughs> Elijah had a shortage of toilet paper. The bottom line, though, is who was providing for who? And I don't want us to miss that point because this is what the whole tension of the text was all about. If Baal is your God, let Baal provide. But if Yahweh is your God, let Yahweh provide. You kind of get what I'm saying? So I think that's very, very important that we not miss that. So if you were to say to somebody out there, speak to the church for a moment. Moment now speak to the church and say to them how would you say to them to understand that I love that statement he reigns on the just and the unjust but it's just who our provider is right how do you make it in the midst of this pandemic what would you say Pastor Katani to a world out there and, and speak to the church right now speak to Christians can I, can speak I just to say the, this real, real quick yeah oh she got to get if, that if, if Buddha provide come on Buddha provide yeah. Well, that's my message when I get to the battle on Carmel, girl. I need folk to stick around. Yeah, we're going to work that way. This is a series, okay. Yeah, All go right. for it. Yeah. You know, God's protection is over his people. Yeah. And just as the Israelites in Goshen, yeah. um, nice. the plagues, nice. all ten plagues. We're going through one one. <laughs> they went through 10 plagues, yeah. 10 difficulties, wow. yeah. and God saw them through each one. It wasn't, it wasn't, the Goshen, in Goshen, there was protection. And even when they left Egypt and they were out in the wilderness, God was there protecting them. Yeah. And so it would behoove us as Christians and as the church to get into the presence of God. I'm not talking about, uh, oh, I'm going to pray this morning, but, yeah. you know, and then, you're, you're just, you've got to be consistent yeah. in your prayer, praying without ceasing, seeking God's face, really changing your lifestyle yeah. um, because God is calling us. And if yeah. we don't awaken and hear the voice of God during this time, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what else to say to you, yeah. Yeah. that God is calling you and he's calling you to turn from your wicked ways. He wants to hear from us. I believe when the church kneels down, mm. when Christians get on their knees, mm. God is going to truly hear from us. Yeah. We're not our on our knees yet yeah and that's wow. the problem we wow. haven't 
fully got on our knees yet. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Donnie, what would you add to that? Well, I think we have an opportunity. Yeah. This opportunity is open. If right now, God has put us in a place where we're sheltered at home. Yeah. Okay? Take the opportunity to seek his face yeah. through every single nice. thing. Nice. Not to worry for anything. Yeah. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Yeah. So we need to stop. We need to focus. And I believe that's what he's doing. Yeah. He has us sheltered in place for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. For us to stop and nice. to seek only him. Yeah, very, very good. Good. Anybody else want to put something on that? Then I want to share this last point. Go for it. Yeah. I'm encouraged by what you said on Sunday about the brook. Yeah, yeah. I ain't at the brook yet, bro. I'm going to get to the brook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the brook is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go ahead. You know, he'll use the raven. If yeah. I may use that. Yeah. He'll use the raven. Yeah. yeah. See, see, the problem, I like that, right? We don't like raven food, right? We want to eat crab legs. And we, we, we want to have steak. We want to have, you know, and we act as if God owes us. Yeah. We don't Entitled. like raven food. Entitled. Yeah. But he'll use the raven, right? I like that. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? I got to get this and I, no, 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 no. You know, and, and sometimes God will do that. Uh -huh. And we got to be okay with that, right? Good, good, good. So listen to this last thing and then we got to wrap this up. This is just too much fun. I'm enjoying this. God always provides. Let me just go here. He always provides, right? So here's what he did to Elijah. He puts him in this place, and now he's providing for them, and he's providing, and he's doing all that stuff. And then when you look at chapter 17, uh, verse 17, uh, 7 of 1 Kings 17, uh, let me just summarize. It says it's, uh, this, uh, that at some point later, the brook dried up, right? And, and when I put this in perspective, and, and, and here's the thing. The brook didn't dry up for the world. Don't miss this. The brook was already dried for them. Yeah. But the brook dried up for the man of God, mm -hmm. where his provision was. Wow. And, and that's heavy because when we wrap this thing up Sunday, as we prepared it, the thing, here's what we said, is that if you get comfortable in the place of provision mm -hmm. and the place of provision becomes your God, then all of a sudden you've created a bail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so here's what Yahweh going to do. He's going to dry your brook up yeah. and dare you, just like he did Baal, provide for yourself. Yeah. Right? This is heavy. When I look at this text, I can't. So my caution, a caution to the church, and I want to give you all some last encouraging words to, before Pastor Connie comes and pray, is that we have to be so careful because we can make our provision our God, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we can make our, our, our spouses God. We can make our jobs God. We can make, you kind of get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. The place of provision. And we say, I'm going to be all right because I got a job. I'm going to be all right because I got a home. I'm going to be all right because I got a car. I'm going to be all right because I got food. But be careful because God will dry that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't realize that we have caused that thing yes, to yes. become our God. Yeah. You kind of get what I'm saying? Pastor Tobias, that may be your last word. What would you say to the audience to be cautious about making things God? Talk to our people, and then we got to wrap this up. How would you say to them about that exercising that caution? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm a witness yeah. that, that he will dry it up. <laughs> yeah. Trust yeah. me when I tell you. When I think yeah. about where I was yeah. compared to where I am. So I sit here sharing from firsthand experience, mm. not from what I heard. Mm. But I do want to say, as it relates to being in the position that we we're in to not get caught up in self yeah. to not yeah, get yeah. caught up yeah. in making it about us yeah. in, in our own and yeah. our immediate because I believe that God is calling on us in this time in which we are in the midst of uh, of a plague yeah. and a famine yeah. um, that we still have an obligation to our brothers and sisters. Yeah, we still have an obligation to one another, to the community to reach out. Yeah. To dare, I dare you not get caught up while you bought, hoarding all the toilet paper <laughs> and all of the paper towels and yeah. sanitary wipes and whatnot. Share. Yeah. 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 Get that stuff out there and give yeah. to the people who don't have. Yeah. Take some of those masks to the hospitals yeah. where the nurses and doctors are sacrificing their very lives and they don't have what they yeah. need. Yeah. The reason I had her share last is because when God dries the brook up, 
We're going to be talking about this Sunday, and I want to invite you to join us at 9 and 11. Then we have a 5 o'clock service we're going to show. We're going to talk about that as well. Now, when he drives the brook up, there's a woman in Zarephath that's prepared to help you. And one of the things our young adults are doing here at the church is that we've been collecting stuff. So if you find yourself in a place of need and you can't find and you're a single mom or a person in need, we want to be able to help. And we're going to do our part to help. So see fast the topaz will be available to do what we can to make things happen. Amen? Amen. Listen, this has been, come on, y'all. I, this, is, this is like off the chain. I like this. This is good. This is good. I'm going to have to try this one Sunday morning. You know what I mean? This is good. So I want to invite you to join us. Pastor Katani is going to come and just gives you some parting words and instruction. Thank you so much for joining us. Share this with the world. Tell people to go on the network and look at it. Um, look at it over and over again. If you have some comment feedback, we want you invite interaction and to be a part of we thank you for joining us pastor k is going to come and share how you can be a part of the ministry how you can connect and then she's going to lead us in a word of prayer and talk yeah amen bless god amen we want to thank our virtual congregation amen let's just give the lord a hand praise yeah hallelujah amen just begin to worship him right where you are sitting or standing or Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. We want to stay connected. Staying connected is just key during this season, amen, that we stay connected as family, as church, as friends of the ministry. We want to be able to reach out. We just thank God that we have the, the, the mechanisms and, and the things in place to keep you connected because I'm telling you, stay safe out there and make sure that you're, you're, you're talking with us. Call the church. We're here. Email us. We're here. You know, you can't, we can't have too many people in the building at the same time, but you can come up here during the day and pray. We can keep 10, we can, we can limit it to two people, to 10 people, but we want you to stay connected. It is still your church. Amen. And God has, has shown his grace on us. So we thank you all for watching. We will see you Sunday. Amen. And before we leave, I just want you to know that the church, the church brook should not run dry. Amen. Amen. That we are God's people and that we will keep the house of the Lord moving and going forth. I know many of you have uh, <clears throat> been laid off. Maybe some of you have lost your jobs. And those are tough times. And we need to know about that. We need to know where you're at, what you're going through. How, how, how is this affecting you? Because your mental health means everything to us. We don't want to hear <clears throat> of one of our congregants or one of our families or friends that are out there struggling when you have a church home. Amen. So make sure that you connect with us. But uh, we're going to take up our offering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. So if you are watching online, well, you all are watching online. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know which platform you're using, but there is a give button. Amen. You can click that or you can uh, 73256 or download our app and then text 73256. There's just so many mediums that you can that you can mail you can mail your check in or mail your money in, amen. Uh, so we can keep the house of the Lord going. We do thank you for those who have been attending virtually with us. We had over 2,100 people on Sunday, amen. amen. Praise God. So amen. the word is still going out. The word is going forth, and I believe God is just calling His people to such a time as this, amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are protecting us through this, Lord. Father God, we know that you are the God that is in total control, Father God. You know where every microscopic form of this kind of this this virus is right now, Lord. You can call it and it could dry up right now, God. But Father God, we stand in your will, Father God. We stand and join partners with you during this, God. We don't, Father God, know when or where or how you're gonna do it, God, but we just wait in anticipation for you to do it, God. So, Father God, in the meantime, we're going to love, we're going to share, we're going to be the people of God that you have called it, uh, called us to be, Lord. And we know when the time is right, Lord, that you will call it back off of this earth. So we thank you in advance. We praise you in advance, God. We want to stay safe. We want to be safe, God. We want to follow the laws of the land. And, Father God, most of all, we want to follow the laws of you. So we thank you tonight. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll see you Sunday. 9 a.m. <laughs>